Welcome to my channel. My name is Estelle and I'm excited to share with you my latest DIY project, transforming thrifted shirts into a beautiful rack quilt. For this video, I wanted to make something that felt like spending the weekend at your grandma's house, something old, quirky and imperfect, but heartwarming. For this quilt, I gathered a collection of 10 thrifted shirts, in different patterns but with a brownish palette. It took me some months to get these many shirts, because I wanted to make sure I chose shirts that are made of comfortable and soft fabrics, and were also at a good price. Ok, so about this project. At first, I wanted to make a rag quilt which is made with squares on both sides, with wadding between the two layers. Instead of buying battle, I thought of using this old blanket, and the squares for the inside are 11 for 11 cm, and the squares for the shirts are 14 for 14 cm. I have not unstitched the shirts before cutting, but I have saved the buttons. And for the back of the quilt, I wanted to use this thrifted sheet I found. Each shirt in this blanket carries its own story and I'm thrilled to give them a new life while reducing waste. When you thrift, buy or make handmade objects, each item carries its own feeling, with visible marks, subtle variations and intricate details that distinguish them from mass-produced products. For the design of the quilt, we separated the colors by dark, light, solid color and prints. Then we designed the first row of 10 squares, so that the fabric patterns would be well distributed. For the next rounds, we repeated the first row, 4 squares apart. When I saw the squares on the bed, I liked how smooth they looked, so I changed my mind, and instead of making a rack quilt, I decided to make a patchwork blanket. To piece the quilt top, I'm facing right sides together and sewing piece by piece until I make a strip of 10 squares. Sewing the strips was quite easy and fast, I really enjoyed this part of the project. Then, it was time to join the strips one by one, pinning them facing the right sides together, making sure the corners match up well. I struggled a little bit more with this part because the pieces got larger and heavier. Fatigue and hunger began to set in, leading in a few errors along the way. It's important to remember that we need to rest and eat during these projects. I often forget myself when I'm in a creative mood.
Since I wasn't doing a rack kilt anymore, I had to figure out how to do the backing. At first, I thought I could use the blanket squares I had already cut out, so I spent a whole morning basting the blanket, only to realize hours later that it had a poor structure this way. So, plan B was to use this batting I had. I didn't remember I had it, and it just matched the sides. At the back, I used the brown thrifted sheet. I stitched the three pieces together, corrected some holes I had at the top, and went to the sewing machine to kilt. The idea was to make diagonals through the kilt, so that it made excess in the squares. It was difficult, but not impossible. After a while, we looked how it was going so far, and we were unexpectedly yearning for the simplicity and charm of the basic squares. What do you think? So I unstitched the diagonals and tried the technique of joining the layers with a thread. I didn't love the result. The structure was weak, and the batting wasn't very warm. Finally, I looked again at my fabric closet and found a perfect chunky fabric with a beautiful blue. I really should put order into that closet, or otherwise I don't even know what I have. So with this final decision, I could start again with the borders, using a technique I learned in a patchwork class. It consists of sewing one corner at a time, facing the good side of the kilt, and then alternating on and under on the corners. Creating this blanket has been an invaluable learning experience for me. Despite making a lot of mistakes and moments of indecision along the way, I'm immensely grateful for summoning the courage to embark on this project and persevering through the challenges rather than succumbing to frustration and abandonment. In the pursuit of perfection and approval, sometimes we forget that it's the flaws that truly make something unique and authentic. I must admit, I've always found comfort in imperfections. There's a certain reassurance in knowing that you don't have to do everything perfect for it to be valid. I recall deliberately leaving behind a lone spoon when washing the dishes when I was a little girl, and that made my mother really nervous. Looking back, I realized it was my way of resisting the notion that life must be a constant test of perfection. We are constantly expected to excel in our studies, careers, and in many aspects of life. So I've come to cherish doing something that is simply enough. Maybe by being like this, I'm not being the best version of me. But one thing is for sure, without the pressure of meeting expectations, I am much happier. So next time you come across something or someone with little flaws, I suggest you embrace it. See the beauty in its imperfections, the story it holds, and the unique character it brings to your life. Each project I make tells a story. The pillow I made on a spring trip to La Rioja, the sweater I made on a road trip with my sister. This will be the blanket I made in Barcelona after slowly collecting old shirts from thrift stores. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video, be welcome to subscribe to my channel. Adeu!